whenever he's talking to students who are expressing an interest in pursuing a life as an entrepreneur, he asks them, uh, are you willing to sell your car to make payroll? Because if you're not, just means you might not have uh, sort of the capacity for risk mentally and emotionally that you might need as an entrepreneur. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Awesome Inc.'s podcast, where we highlight people pursuing their definition of, you guessed it, awesome. So buckle up and get ready for some more success story adventures and failures from Kentucky's tech and entrepreneur community. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Awesome Inc. podcast, the Awesome Inc. and the Innovation Inc. podcast. We're not sure what logo we'll put on Spotify for this one, um, but Garrett, uh, Farback, and I are very excited to be on the phone with um, colleagues who have also become friends from Transylvania University. And we are incredibly excited to be talking about um, not only their work in general with students, but they have recently made a huge decision to make an investment in the world of entrepreneurship and their students and their faculty and their staff, um, which has absolutely thrilled us here at Awesome Inc. Um, we are, it's, it's very unique to see an Institute of Education uh, make such a bold um, decision to get involved with entrepreneurship and teach entrepreneurship and encourage entrepreneurship. Um, so I am going to give them a really brief introduction and let them introduce themselves. So um, on the call, we have Brian Lewis, who is the president of Transylvania, and Steve Angelusi, who's assistant to the president for special projects. So gentlemen, why don't you both give us maybe a slight intro um, about who you are, how in the world you got to this seat, uh, and then we'll, we'll jump into some questions. So Brian, why don't you take us away first? Yeah, I've been at Transylvania and in Lexington for just a little over a year. I started uh, summer of 2020, so impeccable timing to start uh, a university presidency in the midst of a pandemic, but uh, uh, it's been a wonderful welcome to this community. Uh, it's a community that I knew a little bit about uh, before I got here, uh, but I had served for eight years before that as president of Catawba College in Salisbury, North Carolina, and held other uh, higher education administrative and, and teaching roles over the 20 years or so uh, leading up. Uh, to my coming to Lexington. Uh, I'm originally from Toronto, Canada, but uh, happily married to a, a North Carolina lady, and we are loving getting to know Lexington. I did not know you were from Canada. That's great. I think if I could retire anywhere, it's going to be on the North Carolina coast. So, Steve, your turn. How'd you get here? Well, I've been at Trancy a little over two years. I'm not from Canada. I'm from Lexington, Kentucky, and very, very pleased to be. Um, I was recruited to come to Transylvania University by one of uh, President Lewis's predecessors, Dr. Carey, who asked if I'd uh, join him and his staff at the time to explore and look at new opportunities for the school. I had met him in my previous tenure before that as president for 10 years at Lexington Catholic High School. So uh, uh, while I, I, and I do like to tell many people that while I didn't have the opportunity to attend Trancy as a student, I went to UK. I've had the wonderful uh, opportunity at this point in my life and career to be on campus there. And it's a really exciting time to be part of Transylvania. Well, I'll give a very short amount of context from our end. So we were introduced to you guys, for listeners who don't know, um, by, man, I, I should have, you can probably, exp why don't you explain this part, Garrett? You know this better than I do. Uh, okay, I can do that. So I know from my end, I got introduced with Steve uh, for a couple years ago when I used to do some tutoring for GSP applications with his high schoolers. And then we got reconnected recently with Keith McMunn, one of our uh, one of our teammates. He's a, he's a goofball. And Transylvania is wanting to really revamp their entrepreneurship material. And Steve, I, if I can say this, I feel like you have been spearheading that and you've been the main contact that I know the Awesome Inc. team has been able to work with really vision casting, so to speak. Yeah. And I think we're really excited to bring you guys on today. We obviously work with entrepreneurs. We work with startups. And I think uh, if I may be so bold, educational institutions can get a bad rap when it comes to entrepreneurship. Historically, uh, there's definitely a tension there between how do you be an entrepreneur? How do you teach entrepreneurship? And um, I think you guys are really blazing a bit of a trail, especially in a place like middle America um, for choosing to create a center for entrepreneurship. 
uh, which spoiler, that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, and, and really kind of figure out what that tension looks like. So why don't, um, Steve, as Garrett said, you've kind of been spearheading this. Why don't you give us a little bit of the background and maybe how this idea came up for the center of entrepreneurship, what engagement has Transy had with entrepreneurship coming up to this point? Um, and then we'll go from there. Well, I'll, I'll be glad to. Uh, actually, the discussion about starting an entrepreneurship program initiated in some of my early discussions with uh, Dr. Carey when he and I were talking about a position at Transy. He he was uh, interested in, in a program of this nature. There are certainly several around the country. It's not unique to the university space, but it, it may be unique to the liberal arts education uh, world and especially advantageous for us as we're located in such a a good sized city and good sized city of commerce. So literally from that moment on, it, it piqued my interest, but it sort of quietened it down a little as we went through an interim presidency period at Transy and the transition that's inherent in that. Uh, but in, in a meeting of our board of regents, which is sort of a, the brother uh, committee on our campus of the board of trustees, uh, they quickly zeroed in on entrepreneurship being a direction we should look as a school and very quick buy-in and, and commitment to exploring it further. And at the time, little did we know we'd have a, a, a new president coming in the wings from Salisbury, North Carolina, who was going to walk in and embrace change, uh, innovation, and in, and in particular, entrepreneurship. So, Brian, I just teed it up for you. <laughs> well, thank you, Steve. Uh, and, and yeah, it really was teed up for me when I got here because uh, because the regents who are uh, a, a terrific group of, of volunteers, uh, many but not all are alumni, and uh, they really serve as an advisory board, whereas the trustees is our, is our governing board. Uh, so the regents uh, really sort of took this on and, and with Steve's uh, guidance and assistance, really shaped sort of the first elements of it so that we had something to work with. Uh, and now we've been able to take it out to, uh, to the faculty for them to start working on the academic components. And uh, to uh, to friends and supporters of the university to uh, consider investing in it, because uh, I, I do think this is going to be uh, a, a very distinctive element uh, for Transy. And part of our distinctive identity, as Steve was mentioning, is being located right in the heart of Lexington, because there are only a handful of national liberal arts uh, colleges that are located in a, a, even a decent sized city. And even fewer are located within five minutes walking of the heart of the business district. So to be able to take full advantage of that, this program really seemed like it, uh, it checked all the boxes as a way to provide uh, really unique opportunities for our students because they get basically the best of both worlds. They get the small personal uh, attention uh, of a small liberal arts campus but they have all the advantages and opportunities of having Lexington and all that it has to offer literally on their doorstep. And so uh, we're, we're really looking forward to being able to tap that full potential. In the interest of full disclosure, I should mention I'm a liberal arts grad, so I'm, I'm biased in that I'm rooting for, for this entire program. Um, shout out to my Wheaton College grads. Unless you're from Chicago, you won't probably know where I'm talking about, but I think you guys mentioned, you know, Wheaton. So, um, Let's dig in a little bit more. You guys mentioned the regents kind of were the inspiration for this and those in that sort of advisory conversation and then in the conversations amongst um, administration. What? Tell me more maybe about the why. I mean, because this is a huge undertaking. And there's also, I imagine, multiple types of centers or endeavors you guys could approach with the money that you're taking to do this. So why entrepreneurship? So I, I guess I'll lead off there and then ask Steve to chime in as well. Uh, it really was uh, going back to what I said a moment ago about you know checking all the boxes. Uh, we were looking for a way to engage more fully with our host community. Uh, I think Trancy obviously has a remarkable history uh, that uh, even predates Lexington when you get right down to it. Uh, and uh, you know they they are communities that have grown up together. Uh, but uh, for various reasons, the university really hadn't been fully engaging with our host community. And this was a, an ideal way to do it. We wanted to build on our existing strengths. Uh, we do have strong business programs and that those attract students who have a, a real interest in, in that uh, best of both worlds combination that I was talking about before. 
but it also really appealed to us because we see our role as not just preparing students for that first job or that first career, but really giving them the toolkit to be able to be adaptable and to be prepared for that third or fourth career that they're going to be undertaking 20 years from now that doesn't exist today. And uh, if that doesn't sound like entrepreneurial spirit, I don't know what does, uh, because I think that really is uh, sort of at the crux of it. And, and we heard from a lot of folks as we were exploring this that, to your point, Liz, yeah, that the liberal arts really are the ideal preparation for an entrepreneur, because it's, it's not so much about what your particular major is. It's about uh, are you able to think creatively? Are you able to work collaboratively? Are you able to synthesize information from dis different disciplines and, and see how they connect and, and provide new, uh, new paths forward? And so I, I think it, it really was just a natural fit on all of those elements. And then one of the exciting things for me is that as we've been developing it across campus, some of the greatest interest and enthusiasm has come not just from what you might think of as the typical quarters, such as you know, business uh, faculty and students, but people in things like the fine arts who also see that they will need to be entrepreneurial in their activities uh, and they want to learn. You know, even if they don't end up being entrepreneurs themselves, they need to learn and understand the entrepreneurial mindset so that they can work with it more effectively in, in, uh, in their roles going forward. But Steve, you might want to chime in here as well. Well, uh, and I'm happy to. What I think is really interesting is two, two of the people that have been instrumental in recent decades to Trancy's growth and prosperity are Mr. W.T. Young and Mr. Warren Rosenthal, both Lexington people who are highly successful entrepreneurs, for one, and secondly, very community engaged and involved, and were extremely helpful to Trancy, even though they didn't attend Transylvania University. So I think there is a lot to be learned from that. There's a lot uh, for us to aspire through this program to not only reach out to the next more, uh, Warren Rosenthal and W2 Youngs, but to help produce those next people who fill those shoes for our school and other schools. So I, th I think uh, we're sitting on the doorstep, I think, of an outstanding opportunity, not only for current day students, but long term for our school. Absolutely. I think so much of what makes us passionate about entrepreneurship is it is ultimately about um, ownership and, and creativity and wanting to solve problems. And Brian, I think you stated that well, that it is not just about, do you want to go have a tech startup or do you want to have one? You just all of a sudden have one. Do you want to create a tech startup, but do you understand how to see problems clearly, synthesize information, find connections in places that other people don't? So um, that's really exciting. Um, just while we're on the topic of the specific program, um, talk to us a little bit about what, what is this center going to be? Is it going to be a certificate program? What, what does center mean? Um, Steve, I think you're a little bit more in the weeds of what it'll look like, so I'll direct that towards you. I do know our intention is uh, we will start this first year with a uh, purely experiential aspect of it, which is a, a lot of the, the bells and whistles that, that students will gravitate to immediately. Um, in, in time after this year, and when I say the experiential part, certainly in the Awesome Inc. world, you all understand pitch competitions, startups, uh, speakers, workshops, et cetera. And, and our intention is to step forward this school year with many of those elements and expand moving forward, including paid internships. Uh, next year, we, we will spend this year working with our faculty and academic side of campus to develop the academic profile of what this this. Uh, program ends up being for us. And, and and with that, Brian, if I may hand the baton to you to fill in any blanks that you, you can, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. Sure. Thanks, Steve. The uh, the, uh, the academic side of it, as Steve said, we're, we're kind of in the developmental process with our faculty colleagues on that. Uh, and uh, my hope, but I'm, I'm really going to be interested to see uh, where their creative impulses uh, take hold here, is that we're going to come up with something that's a little bit unique. It may not end up being a major or a minor. It may have some other label to it, whether it is a certificate or a distinction or some other vocabulary that is intended to capture that in order to, uh, to receive this credential, you don't just complete academic coursework, 
uh, you also have to complete those kinds of experiential opportunities that Steve was mentioning. And which ones of those would be required and which ones would be optional elements that you package together into a complete experience. That's what we really need to, to rely on the expertise of our faculty, as well as the uh, the input from, from outside experts, people like members of the Board of Regents uh, and other uh, entrepreneurs and, and other resources that Steve has been connecting with, so that we really put together a package that captures all the aspects that we're hoping to uh, to be able to offer to these young students. Liz, if I could add to that, I, something that we are fully committed to for this program is to make sure that it is a welcoming, valuable resource for every student and every major on our campus. Uh, and that will take some uh, academic and curricular gymnastics as we figure this out to make sure that occurs. Um, because I, one thing that I learned, particularly as I began to meet the faculty members who who were unfamiliar with the context of an entrepreneurism program, as they began to learn that our intent is to try to create uh, exposure, information, and and opportunities for not only our students but our faculty and staff to take their passion and talents in areas that can monetize or can do other things that do good for society. So I, I, I think there is a, a much, much potential ahead and, and wider eyes open of opportunity than we even envisioned when we started. Absolutely. I think it's so important to view entrepreneurship as not just uh, limited to any one different type of discipline. So I would love for you all to dig in a little bit into um, how are you approaching the concept of educating entrepreneurship? I know we talked about this a little bit, but um, to our, you know, bias seats in the world of startups, it can be a little bit of an oxymoron. How do you teach someone entrepreneurship? You really have to be an entrepreneur. Um, but I think you guys um, are approaching that really thoughtfully and comprehensively. Um, so, yeah, without without maybe putting too much context into the raise brows from the entrepreneurship community, uh, why don't you guys, um, Steve, I'll, I'll let you, well, Steve or Brian, I'll let either of you take that first. <laughs> I'll let you fight over that one. <laughs> well, thanks, Liz. Uh, it, it is a great question, and I think a very fair one, because it's, you know, do, do you sort of have that entrepreneurial gene or fire in the belly or whatever kind of label you want to put on it. Uh, but I think it's important sometimes for for students to to explore that and to find out whether that really is the thing for them. And the way to do that is, yes, through academic coursework, but also through the kinds of workshops and experiences that Steve was describing. Because to be able to bring those entrepreneurs in and have them sit down and have conversations with the students, one that that uh, Steve and I spoke to said something that really resonated with me. He said, you know, whenever he's talking to students who are expressing an interest in pursuing uh, a life as an entrepreneur, he asks them, uh, are you willing to sell your car to make payroll? Because if you're not and it's not that that makes you a good person or a bad person. It just means you might not have uh, sort of the capacity for risk mentally and emotionally that you might need as an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, I think that's an important thing for a young person to encounter and to, to try it out and discern for themselves whether that is the thing that makes them tick or not. Uh, so uh, can you teach every element of it? Arguably not, but can you expose people to what it's going to take to be successful uh, and have them interact with people who have succeeded and failed, uh, often both, uh, in, uh, in entrepreneurism? Uh, I, I think that can be a really valuable part of the, uh, part of the experience. Steve, anything you want to add to that? Well, I, I think th to those who've asked me the question of can you really teach entrepreneurism, most of the time I have been asked that by entrepreneurs of a certain age and up. And those are uh, people who did not have the opportunity or advantage of an entrepreneurism program likely in their college or university. Now that, that we and many other schools are providing that, I'm expecting in the future that question won't be asked as readily or as, th as quickly by entrepreneurs. Um, for instance, I, I'll just give an example. Many years ago, I got a master's in sports administration. It didn't teach me to be a sports administrator. It exposed me to the many opportunities that were out there to try to become one. So I think uh, we will be doing the, a similar parallel path with our program for entrepreneurism. 
and, and as a recovering lawyer, I can actually kind of uh, can echo that because I think it's it's a fair case to be made that law school doesn't teach you how to be a lawyer. It teaches you about the law, but then you actually learn the process of actually practicing law by doing it. Uh, but uh, having that grounding in, in, uh, and exposure uh, to different concepts and different ways of communication, uh, that's pretty essential preparation. Absolutely. I think also hearing you guys put such an emphasis on the experiential aspect of entrepreneurship and how what the type of center you want this to be, um, I think is encouraging, especially I'm I'm excited about the thought of students rubbing shoulders with other like-minded students from so many different disciplines. Um, and maybe you're not the founder, but you're the coder or the artist who's going to be the graphic designer to the founder. And, and you guys said at the beginning, you still have to understand entrepreneurship and be inspired by entrepreneurship. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about how you guys are, are approaching this. Um, and and to your point, I think, Steve, it was you who said in, in a few years, I think we may not be as concerned. I mean, you could say the same about anything, business. Like, how do you teach business? You have to experience business. business. You pretty much have to experience anything. So um, I also am going to steal one thing that I did write down from our prep notes. And I don't remember which of you who said it, but I think we're all Daniel Pink fans. So whoever of you guys said this, you should take credit. Um, but you guys said we, we have to prepare people to be problem finders, not just problem solvers. And I think that just gets to the heart of um, some much assumptions about education is that uh, we're just teaching students how to jump through hoops and to be uh, excellent sheep rather than um, than than solving or finding the problems themselves. So that's not my thunder. It's one of your thunder. I don't remember which one it was. Uh, well, I, I think we're probably both Pink fans, but uh, I, I remember Pink talking about, uh, you know, who 10 years ago or whatever it was, was sitting there thinking, gee, I need to really find a way to have a complete stranger come and pick me up in their car and take me wherever I want to go. It, 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 it wasn't a problem that people were trying to solve, and yet clearly Uber and Lyft and and uh, similar ride sharing services have absolutely transformed the way that we view education, the way uh, cities work, uh, even in terms of the demand for parking and other transit services. So uh, it, it is fascinating. And uh, Pink also loved to quote um, Sid Caesar, the, the veteran comedian, who said, the guy who invented the wheel was an idiot. The guy who invented the other three was a genius. <laughs> And I think, I think entrepreneurism uh, is sometimes about figuring out, okay, yeah, hmm, where, where can we find those other three wheels to make a, a concept come to life? Absolutely. So um, as we uh, we'll kind of turn the corner uh, near the end here. So tell me, what is the physical center going to look like? How can um, we have a lot of people are going to listen to this podcast. A lot of them will be entrepreneurs, um, but a lot of them are corporate innovators. A lot of them are parents and a lot of them are students. So how can students get excited? Um, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll talk more specifically of kind of what's what's next in the next weeks and radars for this center. I got a text one day, President Lewis was doing some, some kind of a tour of campus, and he happened to be standing in a facility in a standalone building we have on 4th Street called the Rosenthal Commons, and he sends me a text uh, that you could read the excitement in. It's, I think I've basically found the spot for our Center for Entrepreneurism. Uh, first of all, does, uh, that tells me, first of all, the enthusiasm and the buy-in of the president of the school which is essential to a program like this, not only prospering, but thriving. Secondly, it's a fantastic facility for us that uh, used to house sort of the, the clubhouse meeting space for an apartment complex on campus, funded by a gentleman that I, I mentioned earlier, Mr. Warren Rosenthal. And it, it, it is, a, and I will say it's what we'll call beachfront property. It's literally on the street on 4th Street. It, it, will be, it will be obvious and evident that Transy is committed to this program. So uh, there's really nothing but positive things with every aspect of this whole whole initiative up to this point and to have a physical presence with the building we'll have for it right across from the awesome new student center and the relatively new dorms is uh, it's going to be uh, entrepreneurship central for darn sure for our students and hopefully others in the community. 
Yeah, Steve's exactly right. I mean, the location is is so perfect because, you know, there it is almost at the corner of 4th and Broadway, uh, easily accessed. There's parking right next to it. So off-campus visitors and speakers and so on uh, can, can get to it easily. Uh, as Steve mentioned, you know, the Rosenthal Commons used to be the, the main space uh, as sort of a gathering or living space for folks residing in in the Rosenthal apartment complex. But with our new William T. Young Campus Center right across the street, uh, that that purpose kind of became redundant. Uh, and uh, actually, the two the two facilities can really sort of uh, not just coexist, but uh, really help promote each other because of their proximity. Uh, and it is so proximate to the residential part of campus. You know, it's a 30 second walk across the street from where most of our students live. Uh, and uh, it, it can be available to them basically 24-7 with card key access. So it's going to be a, a state-of-the-art facility that can be a place to meet, a, ple- a place to collaborate uh, and be creative, uh, and a place where entrepreneurs can come and share their stories and their visions. I think one of the things I've liked in, in this conversation, Steve, and I guess the last four months that we've gotten to get reacquainted and talk about the vision you guys have at school is that's one of the been one of the most enjoyable parts of being here at Austin Mink in Lexington. I was talking with a good friend here in town who just won a pitch competition in Louisville about a month ago. And that was one of the things he said he's benefited from the most of being within the Lexington entrepreneur community. He can come, he's not just working from his front porch or he's working from a coffee shop. He's in a space where he's around people who are raising rounds or they're trying to hire right people. And the cool thing with what you guys have envisioned is you are helping, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds with their next decade of life. And I think what's really cool with that, especially is we've talked about it. Not everything you learn in school, you're going to apply <laughs> when you get out. I know for me, I pretty much got retrained when I graduated school and came to work here at Austin Inc. And you guys are helping students not just learn, like like Liz mentioned, be sheep, but you're helping them start learning how to identify and solve problems so that when, when they get out of school, there won't be as much of a gap or a learning jump of, hey, I've learned and I know how to read and annotate notes and do whatever. I can actually think and work with teams. And I think that's one of the things that's going to be most valuable from this uh, from this entrepreneurship center, but what you guys are planning to do and how you want to change up the school's norm. Yeah, I think you're right on target, and and we're excited uh, about the, what has already happened, but what uh, the potential is with our partnership with Awesome Inc. Uh, you know, in in some ways, uh, you know, Awesome Inc. was part of the inspiration here because of, of its proximity to campus and the opportunity for us to collaborate with people who were doing these kinds of things day in day out. Uh, and uh, that you all are being able to you know, sort of model some things for us, or, or provide the lead and the guidance on others, and uh, yeah, that's that's one thing that really impressed me the first time I set foot in Awesome Inc. was that it was all about everybody helping each other succeed and get better. It wasn't you know, it, it's competitive, but it's not. Well, if I succeed, then you don't. That's not the the, the vibe at all. It's let's find ways that we can help each other. And that's, that's really inspirational. Well said, Steve. I also, I also enjoyed the uh, thumbs up on the video. <laughs> well, you know, I've had the pleasure of, of meeting you all from day one and not only been you know, inspired and helped in direction from you all, but Liz, I liked what you started this, this podcast with by using the word friends because I uh, Clearly, uh, we feel that way from our campus, and to be able to have a chance to to develop something new, to be uh, innovative in our space, and to do it with people that you call friends is one of the gifts that uh, you don't get every day, but we have it in this case. So, our pleasure indeed. Absolutely. Well, again, I just want to commend you guys, I think, especially in an age when um, college and education, I think students these days are trying to figure out what is what is the great or the best next step after high school and to watch you guys reimagine and think creatively of how to best serve your students and prepare students for the world to come. um, I imagine that's not just limited to how you're thinking about this center, but how you think about your entire student experience. So um, I'm excited for students currently at Transy who are going to get to experience it and, and those to come. So uh, certainly for our students who are listening, um, you should 
of course, consider Transylvania for the next stage of your life. Um, but I, I'm also just, I would really put out an encouragement to those listening in our community. Um, I think you've heard Stephen Bryan say you guys want to be engaged with Lexington in the business community with professionals, with startups and entrepreneurs. Um, so I think that's a, a great challenge that we can put out to our business community is um, to really uh, take take that challenge uh, and show up for students, be mentors, be partners, hire them, um, bring them on as interns, um, et cetera. So any, any last words or places that people can connect with you guys as we wrap up? Yeah, I just, again, thanks for the opportunity to have this conversation. Thanks for the ongoing partnership. Uh, I, I guess what I would say in closing, Liz, is that people will see on our admissions materials and marketing and so on a sort of a tagline of pursue bold paths. And that's not just a marketing tagline. E each word actually has a very intentional uh, value uh, for us. Uh, we use pursue because this is not going to be just a passive receptive type of education, whether you're in entrepreneurship or chemistry or art or any of the other 46 majors that you can pursue uh, currently at, at Transylvania. Uh, this is going to be experiential education that is going to prepare you for uh, for that conceptual age that Dan Pink talks about with uh, a skill set that can't be automated, outsourced or replaced with artificial intelligence. Uh, bold. Yeah, we, we, we have always been bold. After all, we are the Transylvania pioneers. We've been around for 241 years, and, and you don't get to be 241 years uh, in any industry uh, without consistently evolving to meet the needs of the times. And so we, we continue to want to be bold. And uh, paths is intentionally plural. Because to my earlier comment, we understand that people aren't just going to have that one job or one career. They're going to be doing multiple things, uh, maybe even things that aren't conceived of yet during the course of their of their working lives. And we want to give them every opportunity to fulfill their uh, their potential to do so. What a great last word. Well, gentlemen, again, thank you so much for joining. Um, we're excited for people to hear more about, in my opinion, one of Lexington's, I would say best kept secrets, but I feel like Trinilvania is not so much a secret. What is a secret is 241 years. I forget that all too often. So what a legacy. Um, what a legacy. So and, well, here's, and here's to the next 241 yeah, here's, years. <laughs> here's the next 200, 241 years. So well, again, thank you guys. And we will see you in person, hopefully soon. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Awesome Inks Podcast. And another quick thank you to Lee Rosevere and a few members from our community who provide the music that you hear in the show. Lastly, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. Or even better, come on down to our space. Come be a part of our community and get plugged in. And let's start something awesome together. You guys rock. We'll see you next time.